So good day everyone, I am Sripa Umpadiram Patan from BSS W1C. So for today, for this video, I will discuss my report, which is the four kinds of conflict under Neil E. Miller and John Dollard theory. Also the first frustration aggression hypothesis and the importance of language under Neil Miller and John Dollard. So before I start, let's know more John Dollard and Neil Miller. So who is Neil Miller? Neil Miller studied with the famous learning theorist, Clark, which is the Clark Hood. Well known for his work with biofeedback and animal models and human behavior. He also he also the president of the EAPA. So who is John Dollard? John Dollard was proof of anthropology at the Yale or Yale. He wrote the classic 1973 book which is the case and class in a southern town with the mill with Miller and others and others he also wrote an important book which is the frustration and Agri aggression so theory and concepts a good attempt to explain Freudian concepts such as repression and displacement in the terms of learning which is the drive reduction theory. A good attempt to re reconcile psycho psychoanalysis and behavior reason. So let's move on to the kinds of conflicts. First is approach to approach. What is approach to approach? You are drawn to two equally attractive goals. Example is date Mary or Jane. Number two is avoidance, avoidance, avoidance. This is you are refilled to by two equally and an attractive goals, which example is working overtime versus not being able to pay bills. Third is approach to avoidance. You are equally attractive to and refilled. From one good example is might be drawn to graduate school for for the degree but defiled by all the hard work. Number four is double approach avoidance. You are both drawn to and refilled from two goals. Example working overtime goal good pay but you're tired and find and family dinner you feel obligated but find this boring so let's move on to frustration aggression hypothesis dollard and miller suggest that aggression is the result of frustra frustration a correct but incomplete explanation the unconscious mind number one is experiences the world the where never verbalize experiences during the first year or two of life may make a strong expression but because language has not yet been learned the experiences will never verbalize or labeled those they remain unconscious number two is suppression suppression anxiety is a drive and each reduction is reinforcing, redirecting the mind from anxiety. Provoking thoughts is reinforcing and becomes a habit. Number three is repression. Repression is the above process because becomes automat automatic and anxiety can be totally avoided rather than just escape from. And the last is stupid behaviors. Dollard and Miller used this term to indicate that refreshed thought, thoughts cannot be dealt with logically or rationally. So behaviors related to them 
will appear stupid and unreasonable. And uh, I think this, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for listening.